You're listening to TF Talk Weekly, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net. Mr. Starscream here, and I got a level with you all. I'm a little forlorn that no one played my game at the end of the last regular episode of TF Talk Weekly, where I invited listeners to send a special email about Lucas to our email podcast at tfylp.com. The only one who did was our own cast member, Rob. Thanks, Rob. You're the best. That means no one will ever find out what special goodies I was going to send to a lucky listener. Fear not, though, I will hide another special email subject line in this very podcast, and the first non-cast member to email it to us will win another special prize from yours truly. Trust me, this is worth the chase. In this episode, we'll hear a story from Rick Alvarez, put a close for now to Unicron Watch, and hear from a young TF fan that has become a YouTube extraordinaire in his own right. But for now, the reveal spiel. After the onslaught of New York Comic Con, where Earthrise was introduced, the reveals have been a bit stagnant. That is, unless you aren't a bust or statue enthusiast. Super high-end collectible statue manufacturer Prime One Studio has revealed full-color images of their upcoming Bumblebee movie Soundwave statue. This high-end collectible features Movieverse Soundwave as he was seen in the recent Bumblebee movie along with his faithful minion, Ravage. Soundwave's optic visor sports red lights, and he has an imposing stance, commanding Ravage to attack while pointing towards enemy Autobots. This statue is designated MMTFM-27, which follows MMTFM-26 Optimus Prime from the same film. It was recently announced that for the first time, Prime One Studios' fully licensed collectibles will be available worldwide instead of exclusively in Asia. Although a price has not been stated for these items, it is typical for these high-end statues to breach the four-figure mark, so they're probably not for everybody. Soundwave is the fourth statue by Prime One Studios to be created from the Travis Knight-directed Transformers Bumblebee film, so I guess if you have about five grand, you can collect the whole set. Also, back to the topic of Earthrise, no new toys have been revealed or leaked since last week, but some images of the new style of packaging were found online thanks to e-tailer in-demand toys. Although it was suspected that the packaging for Earthrise might see a major structural overhaul from Siege due to the different shipping case assortments, the images revealed that the shape of the packaging will remain greatly unchanged. The color scheme of the packaging is drastically altered though, featuring a more blue and green color scheme versus Siege's stark black. This is likely to evoke the next arc in the trilogy as our favorite Cybertronians head off to our own pale blue dot, Planet Earth. Let's just hope the writers of the fiction don't get all crazy on us and decide Earth becomes Unicron again in the final part of the trilogy. I mean, there's no major reason to think they might do that anytime soon, right? There's lots showing up on shelves across North America that we need to talk about, namely new waves at a variety of stores. Just this past week, Wave 4 of the Siege Deluxe toys have been appearing at Targets and Walmarts. This wave has been highly anticipated because of the mainline versions of fanvote characters Impactor and Mirage. Along for the ride with these Autobots is the Datsun Car Redeco of Decepticon Barricade, which is a remold of Generation Select Smokescreen, and now gives us four very contrasting decos for this Hate It or Love It Deluxe mold. If you take a trip to your local store and see a couple of lone six-guns sitting on the pegs, well, then you can wallow in the fact that you were just a little late to the game. Oh, don't be snoozing. If Cyberverse is your thing, then check Walmarts for Wave 5 of the Warrior class featuring Jetfire, Autobot Drift, and a new Bumblebee sporting an alternative weapon gimmick. This may be the end of the road for the Cyberverse Warrior class, as no new molds or characters have been revealed past these, and the higher price point deluxe class with build-a-figure parts is imminent on the horizon. While you're out and about, you may want to check the Studio Series section, as some stores seem to be restocking Voyager Rampage and 38 Optimus Voyagers if you missed them in the spring. Other unexpected sightings this week include Flame Toys IDW Megatron and Shattered Glass Optimus Furi model kits. These build-it-yourself non-transforming figures have been spotted at Barnes & Nobles, which have been beefing up the collectible and Japanese manga fan offerings. I was pretty sure Shattered Glass Optimus was supposed to be some kind of exclusive, but hey, whatever. 
And to all the bot bots collectors out there feeling neglected, Amazon has your back. The incredibly expensive and hard to find Bakery Bites subgroup has finally seen wide release as five packs on Amazon.com. This is a relief to those that were fiending to catch all of Series 1.5, but good luck snatching up the rest of those Lawn League. Woo-wee! Maybe they'll see a release by Black Friday or something, but don't quote Mr. Starscream on that one just yet. And hey, Ratchet, where you at, man? The one that got away. Not all Transformers items are little plastic robots, and some of the hardest pieces to track down may subvert your expectations. Today, TF Talk cast member Rick Alvarez gives us a first-hand account of the levels of perseverance needed to turn the one that got away into the one that's in your collection. Hi everyone, I'm Rick Alvarez, and boy, do I have a story for you. So this story goes back almost 10 years ago. There was this auction happening in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. This guy was selling his entire Transformers collection, and I drive down from Connecticut, and we make our way out there through the snow to this little rinky-dink auction house, and laid out before us is this amazing collection. The only thing I wanted was the Trailbreaker power cycle in the box. It had an unused sticker sheet and it had a mint condition instructions booklet. All the pieces were still sealed in the original package. And this is one of two that I've ever shown up in the box. And this is probably the only one that still had all its little screws and nuts and bolts still sealed in the back. We get there and the place is packed and there's like a black Sarek that's sealed. All the tapes are there sealed. And all I wanted was a stupid power cycle. It's the first item for auction. And I place my bid $50. About the $950 mark, I lean over and there's another guy in the front row and he's already staring at me. And I'm like, what's the deal? He's like, oh, I already have one. I just need the sticker sheet. So at this point, I'm about 900 bucks over what I want to spend on this thing. All right, I tap out. So I do the Rick thing and I I go over after the auction and I I go talk to this guy and I become friends with him. He makes a deal with me. He's like, hey man, your your books got me into collecting Transformers. Thank you so much. So listen, if I ever sell this, it's gonna come to you. I'm gonna ask you first. I'm like, thank you, I appreciate that. We stay in touch every couple of years. We might run into each other at a show. I move into my house, I've just, spent an incredible amount of money on this house and he hits me up. Rick, getting out, selling it all. I got what you want. I got the power cycle. Now keep in mind, this is the same power cycle that got away from me all those years ago. The one that got away. And I'm like, how much? He's like, you can have it for what I had it. I bought it for. I'm like, that's great. I'm broke. So I went through about a 24 hour period where I tried to sell things that I could, I I don't like to sell things. So I I was trying to piece together some stuff that I could sell, but nobody was biting. So I I may have borrowed my wife's credit card. Don't worry, I paid her back. Long story short, we meet up. I drive out to the middle of nowhere to this supermarket that's closed. And there it is. There's the trail breaker power cycle. And he still has the sticker sheet intact. Everything's still sealed. It's just exactly how I remembered it. I give him the cash and it comes home to me. And I took the instructions, I took the sticker sheet, and I had them framed together. And just to get them framed, that was that was a $400 frame job. If you were to ask me what this thing's worth, well, I mean, something's only worth as much as someone's willing to pay for it. If I were to find a power cycle in a better box, let's say it's sealed, completely 100% factory sealed, man, I would not hesitate to drop $3,500 on it. And here's another addendum. A few weeks after getting my power cycle, and again, Remember, I said this was the second one I'd ever seen in the box. Another one shows up in the box, but this one's a variant because the Canadian one had English and French on it. I didn't get that one, but I know who did, and it will be mine. So I guess if you're patient, things will go your way. I don't know if there's a moral to the story, but... It's got a happy ending because I got the Trailbreaker power cycle I wanted. Not only did I get the power cycle I wanted for my collection, I got the very same one that slipped through my hands all those years ago. The one that got away. (laughs) 
This fine real estate situated smack dab in the middle of our program is brought to you by no one. If you are interested in reaching engaged pop culture podcast listeners, then give us a ring and we can feature you and your brand in this segment. The first one to email podcast at tfylp.com with the subject line, Mr. Starscream Rules, will get a special prize. We'd love to hear from you. And now, back to the show. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to not have a soul-crushing job? Or how your life could have been different had you been born at a time when internet staples like YouTube had already existed for quite a few years? Well, you can try living vicariously through our special guest, Diamond Bolt, an up-and-coming YouTuber that got his start by making videos about the Transformers brand and fandom through the eyes of his non-G1 introduction to the franchise. Well, hello everyone, I'm Diamond Bolt. Uh, Some of you may know me from my YouTube channel where I used to make videos about Transformers, and I am very happy to be on here. Now I make videos that are kind of more in in general about things like uh, video games and movies. At the moment, I do a lot of movie review videos and it's less focused on one franchise. I did start with Transformers uh, as the main focus of my channel. Uh, because it was a series that I was very passionate about at the time, very knowledgeable on. Personally, as a, as a Transformers fan, my biggest focus was more on like the characters and the story, uh, less than the, the toys, because I'll tell you what, they're not cheap here. Uh, I'm located in Australia, so <laughs> the toys go for about 25 to $30 each, and those are the deluxe class ones, I believe. I still made an effort uh, you know, a few years ago to try and grab as many as I could, but nowadays I don't really anymore. So I digest the series through uh, the comics and the TV shows and, and more of the, the story. I don't have it in me to do tour reviews because I don't have that many. And I just, personally, I've never found it that interesting as a form of content. So I had no idea how I would have been able to make it interesting myself. And I still don't think I could do it. But I've been proven wrong by various uh, other YouTube channels who have made toy reviews very interesting and very funny. The problem for me was that Transformers became a little bit like too much related to work and so I couldn't really enjoy it as much. But now that I've moved away from it, I am finding myself getting back into it a little. What what it's like being a YouTuber is is quite interesting, I have to say. It's like you get broadcasted to so many people and yet it doesn't feel like it a lot of the time in a sense that you just carry on with your normal life as you would. But then, you know, when you really stop to think about how many people are watching, the amount of views that I get nowadays just completely goes over my head in the sense that how, what a massive quantity of people that is. Because thinking about it, a hundred people is a hell of a lot of people. And yet that's not a lot on YouTube. So it's, it's an honor, honestly, to have come this far. I think it's really unique in comparison into a lot of uh, other careers, but I love it. It is something I plan on doing for as long as I'm able, hopefully as a full-time career, but YouTube is not exactly the most (laughs) stable career option, I must say. (laughs) Well, thank you guys for listening to me. I am obviously uh, Diamond Bolt on YouTube or Diamond Bolt 7 on Twitter if you want to check me out and all my (laughs) garbage tweets on there. Uh, But thanks for having me on. I'd like to thank Diamond Bolt for staying up super late so I could interview him super early for me. Check out some of the earlier videos like Transformers Top 10s and Ruin Forever to see what originally attracted followers to his channel and give him a friendly subscribe. Ahem, <clears throat> that is after you subscribe to TFYLP and TF Talk, of course. He's big, he's bad, and he's still being funded at the HasLab. This is Unicron Watch a special segment where we follow the progress of the currently developing story surrounding this monumental Transformers figure. That's it, the funding is over, the credit cards have been charged, and many wallets across the world were silenced in an instant. Unicron has awoken, and he hungers. This is likely the last Unicron Watch segment for the foreseeable future, so I asked Ouch My Wallet host Rob to weigh in on the Unicron aftermath. Hi, this is Robert Simmons, a host of Ouch My Wallet on Wednesdays. When they first announced this, the hype was real. You know, now that it's over, as we got into the, the final stretch, I know I wasn't the only one that uh, the hype had died down for. Like, I was still happy to back it, but if it didn't fund, I was also content. And I feel that that I was not singular in that emotion. I know I've heard other people express that same feeling. Uh, I feel that some of the things that happened along the campaign just kind of soured, if not necessarily Unicron itself, just the experience of the crowdfund. Because crowdfund has always been kind of a community-driven effort. 
the fans of something want something to happen. They, you know, so there's some creators that can make it happen, you know, and then working together. And Hasbro tried to latch on to that, but then throughout the run did some very corporate moves that really go against that community feeling. And I mean, and Hasbro's a business and we all know that they're a business. They're there to sell toys and make money. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. They're toys. They're not important, you know, to life. And then when they did hide the final numbers, that also felt like a very corporate move. It's like it's supposed to be a community thing that you wanted a community to come together and fund this. And then you're like, oh, well, we can't show the final sales numbers. Again, just felt really corporate. And that plus just the way that some of the general hype had died down anyways on things. It just kind of all ended with, you know, I can't say a whimper, but I also can't say a bang. It just felt very meh by the end. Um, we'll see if, you know, in the year and a half when this thing finally comes out, if maybe the hype can build back up and people will be excited again. Wow. Tell us how you really feel. Thanks, Rob, for putting a bow on Unicron Watch. And if you, the listener, want to weigh in, leave a comment or email us at podcast at tfylp.com. And speaking of TFYLP, our commander in chief, Lucas, stopped by to remind us where the TF Talk Network originated from and speak to us about our flagship podcast. I'm Lucas Bockelman. I'm the host of TFYLP, which stands for Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure podcast. So TFYLP is one of the longer running Transformers podcasts on the net. It predates YouTube. So Duran Land has been at the reins of the show for, you know, most of the time. And uh, this year he decided to retire from podcasting and uh, hand the reins over to the cast and myself as the main host. So the TF Talk Network is the overall network for all of these shows. So we have uh, multiple shows underneath that umbrella, which includes Microcasters, Ouch My Wallet. Uh, We have a show with uh, Rick Alvarez called Cut the Tape. And then we have the main TFYLP show. So essentially TFYLP is the flagship show for the uh, TF Talk Network. We also have a Facebook community, the uh, TFYLP group. And then we also have tftalk.net Facebook page. And then we also have a website where we you know, post all of the content uh, from ourselves, and then we also post all of the relevant Transformers news. We will be at uh, TFCon here in a couple weeks, so we'll be providing live coverage of the show. Uh, if you're there at the show and you see us in our TF Talk t-shirts, uh, you know, come by and, and say hello. Yeah, definitely take Lucas up on that and meet a variety of the cast members at the upcoming convention in Reston, Virginia. Will Mr. Starscream be there? That remains to be seen, as I am still scheming a way to attend. I'll be wearing a pretender shell of some sort, though, so you probably won't even notice me. I have a penchant for fake mustaches. Well, here's your moment of zen. The guy finds out that the girl was cheating on him, but he had already signed a deal with the auction house, and he couldn't back out. He had to sell his collection. The TF Talk Network exists from the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans all across North America and beyond. The concept was created by Duran Land, and the main show, TFYLP, has continued for over 10 years due to his diligence and care. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms or even email us at podcast at tfylp.com. You can directly support the podcast and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations to Patreon are used to cover expenses incurred by running the shows and are not distributed to individual staff members. I mean, think about it. If you just took one of those Unicrons you bought and donated it to TFYLP, we'd be on the air for an entire year. That's all it takes, guys. Or five bucks a month. Thanks for sticking with us, and this is Mr. Starscream, signing off. 